Hi, I'm Lindsay and I'm working with Gabriel on assignment 7 for Engineering 450 and today we're going to discuss time studies. So first of all, the basic of time studies. What is a time study? A time study is a technique used to determine the standard time for an operation by collecting a series of time data, taking t total times, and evaluating how much does it take for an operator to perform a specific task. And there are several purposes for time studies. They're very useful. One of the most important ones is for planning production. So you determine the number of operators you need depending on, how, on the standard time for a specific task, selecting an appropriate method for performance. That means using this technique instead of this technique dependent on the shortest time, evaluating a device or tool if it's useful, and, and if it helps the production process to be faster. You can also est you can also use it to estimate direct labor costs, determine how much most of the workers in manufacturing in manufacturing processes they have a base rate and then depending depending on their production they get extra money added onto their salary if they're very effective or not as effective. And to check your training progress, determine how long the learning curve will stand, monitor some of the production, among others. So how do you determine a time study and how do you determine the standard times? So first of all, you have you need a reliable a reliable watch that could take proper time with specific seconds or tenths of a minute. And then you will first get your fixed time, which this is the time adjusted to account for the individual performer. And when you're doing a time study, you want to look for a typical operator. This means somebody that meets your production goals, somebody that works at a average rate, and you would consider this person 100%. So you're, you would multiply their time times 100%. But if you're working with a very fast operator that you have determined throughout time that he's very quick, his rate of work is faster, it could be 120%, and you would have to multiply the measure time times, 100, times the 120th percent. And to determine the rate of an operator, it simply requires estimating the effectiveness of an operator based on operations and based on being used and accustomed to the process. After you have your fixed time, you proceed into your base time. And your base time just takes into account the frequency of an element. And usually the frequency for most general time studies are one to one. That means that the this there's one the element takes place once in a cycle. That means that let's say the task is to dispose trash. The driver pulls over once, takes out the trash, disposes the trash, and then exits the premises. But uh, this can be very helpful for maintenance when there's a lot of maintenance operations that they, they don't take in, they don't happen every time, therefore the frequency is less and you would have to take this into account into your base time. After that you go you proceed you get your standard time, which is just multiplying your base time and taking into account your time allowances, which we will discuss further. And your standard time in the end determines as we had said, how much time it takes to per, to do a specific test. Okay, and now time allowances. Time allowances are usually due to personal time fatigue and delay, and they are also known for this. Uh, this takes into account normal fatigue throughout the work shift, along with distractions due to unavoidable delays, such as cleaning, setting up, among others. And how do you measure production taking this into consideration? So usually you, you would perform a time study on a standard setter. That's a typical set, typical operator that works on a 100% rate, as we had discussed in our previous slide. You would perform a time study for 25 minutes and then multiply this by 2. And this will give you the expected production given a 10-minute time allowance. And the typical time allowances are around 15% of an hour, that is 9 to 10 minutes. And the maximum time allowance would be 30% of an hour, which would be 
18 minutes and this would o would only be on heavy operations but usually most manufacturing facilities or manufacturing production processes uh, give the operator a 9 to 10 minute time allowance. So now we're going to go ahead and talk about predetermined time standards and the two main time standards that we're going to discuss today are MTM and MOST. MTM stands for Motion Time Measurement and um, this is the most basic um, of the time systems that is most widely used in um, business. So this um, particular system evaluates manual operations or methods into basic motion and it also assigns a predetermined time based on motion and environmental conditions. And we're going to see um, later that the difference between this and most is that this looks at each of the individual tasks within a sequence but it doesn't really care about the actual sequence. It really just cares about the basic tasks. And there's three main MTMs. The first is MTM1, which we're going to talk about in more detail later. And this is the fundamental and basic MTM system. MTM2 is basically um, the same as MTM1, but it also incorporates a combination for MTM motions. And then MTM3, it, um, what it does, it's time saving at the expense of accuracy. And there's different versions of MTM3. There's MTM-HC, for instance, which stands for MTM Healthcare. There's MTM-C, which is used in insurance and banking, banking industries, and a variety of other MTM that are used in industry. So um, MTM1, we'll talk about a little deeper since this is the most um, basic of all of the methods. And it uses a thing called Thurbligs. And what these are are basic fundamental motions. So you can see a uh, few are listed here. For instance, this is just a small list of them. There's turn, reach, release, move, position, grasp, and disengage. And like I said, this is just a few of the many. So there's three main steps um, involved in this. First, you have to summarize the right and left hand motions. Then you determine the time measure unit, which is TMU. And then at the end, you remove non-limiting motion values. And I'll quickly go through an example so we can see how this works. As you can see, the um, box shown um, is straight from our textbook. And basically, this is showing um, an example of light, left hand and right hand actions that were taken. So for instance, right hand to bend and release assembly were done by different hands. So those are each um, given a specific symbol. So in this case, they both have to deal with release or reach. And so each of these symbols correspond to a specific TMU. So then what you have to do is go through and determine whether these two actions can be um, done simultaneously. If they cannot, an asterisk has to be placed by the name. And then to um, determine the total TMU, you add up each of the TMUs with an asterisk to the TMUs if they can be done at the same time. For instance, reach hand to bend can be done with the left hand at the same time that release assembly can be done with the right hand. So 12.9 is used since it's larger than 1. And if you add all these up for this example, you get 63.1 for the total TMU. Now most is a um, it's based on MTM, and this concentrates on the movement of objects. And like I said earlier, this deals with the sequence. So there's three main aspects of this. The first is the general move, which is an object moving freely, such as a book being picked up off the ground. A controlled move remains in contact with the surface, so if some, like a cup is sliding uh, across a desk. And then tool use is the use of hands. So this graph, um, as you can see, shows basic most, and it shows each of the activities that I just described. And um, to show you kind of what this means, I'll just use general move as an example. And the sequence model is ABG space ABP space A. And the first three letters of that is the reach. The second part is the get, and then the final is A, which is for um, removing or releasing that. And we'll show an example so this can make a little bit more sense. All right, so an example of most is a worker walks five steps, picks up a small part from the floor, returns to his original position, and places the work on his work table. And as you can see, the solution uses the same sequence that we just saw, A, B, G, A, P, A, B, P, A. And the A in this case is A10, and all of these um, different A's correspond to a number of T or a number of index values. So A10 is what's used when you're talking about walking five steps. So um, 
and then bend and raise is b6, gain control is g1, and so on and so forth. And then you can see at the bottom, the sum of all of these indexes for these, this particular sequence is 28. To um, find the TMUs, you simply um, multiply the index values by 10, and you get your answer. So that's just a little bit about time studies and some of the predetermined time studies that are used in industry. And here are a few of the sources that we've used. And thank you for watching.